In this video, I want to discuss voltage, current and resistance. I'm going to discuss it from a perspective of a mechanical engineer. The reason I want to look at it like this is because a lot of electrical engineering courses are taught quite rightly by strictly electrical engineers. I learned about electrical engineering much later in my career. So whilst I now know a lot more about electrical engineering than I used to, I appreciate that if you're coming from a mechanical engineering background, or maybe you're used to dealing with topics like thermodynamics, you might appreciate if someone explains voltage, current and resistance in terms that you already understand. Maybe meters cubed, pounds per square inch, bar, etc. So let me explain to you what voltage, current and resistance is using a hydroelectric power plant. This is our hydroelectric power plant. It is actually a tidal power plant and we generate electricity by allowing water to flow from one side of the turbine to the other. Let's have a look exactly what happens. I'll play the animation and you can see the water level on the left is rising. And now we've got these blue arrows that appear because the water is flowing from the left side to the right side and it's flowing across our turbine. The turbine then rotates and we generate electricity. Notice that the level on the left is always higher than the level on the right. Once the levels equalize, we're not going to get any flow past our turbine. That's because there's no pressure difference across the turbine. It's pressure difference that causes flow. If you're working in the world of power generation, specifically hydroelectric power plants, you'll often hear people talking about potential energy. Potential energy just means that it's energy that could do work. Sometimes when people are discussing other people, they say, ah, oh, he has got potential or she has got potential. It means they've got a lot of locked up potential and they may go on and do great things. Some people waste their potential. In engineering, it's the same. The potential energy that we've got on the right side of the screen compared to the left side of the screen when we're looking at the water levels is zero because the water levels are the same. We need a difference in height in order to get potential energy. And that potential energy will be based upon the height of the two water levels. Let's see if the potential energy changes. Notice now that the left side of the screen has a reducing water level. And on the right side of the screen, the water level is higher. The potential of the water on the right is greater than that of the potential of the water on the left. And it's due to this height difference. The reason we're interested in potential energy is because we want to know how much power we can generate should that potential energy be realized. Now there's an equation for this. We look at the potential energy stored, which is measured by the difference in height between the two water levels. We look at the flow rate through the turbine, and then we have a look at how efficient this process is of converting this potential energy into power. So when we're looking at this arrangement, the power out equals the pressure drop across the turbine multiplied by the flow rate across the turbine, and then multiplied by how efficient the process is of converting this potential energy to power. So how does this relate to voltage, current, resistance, and electrical power? Well, the difference in height between the right and the left sides of the screen represents the pressure difference across our turbine. This is the equivalent of the potential difference across a battery. One side of a battery has more electrons than another. These electrons want to flow from the negative side of the battery to the positive side. With our hydroelectric power plant, the water wants to flow from the area where it is high to the area where it is low. If we've got the same number of electrons on the negative side of a battery as there are on the positive side of the battery, then no electrons will flow. If the water level on both sides of our turbine is the same, no water will flow. So voltage is like pressure. In our example, it's this difference in pressure that forces the water across the turbine. When we're talking about electricity, it's the difference in the number of electrons on one side compared to the other that causes the electrons to flow. When electrons flow, we get current. The definition of an amp 
which is a unit to measure current flow, is actually coulombs per second, which is, if we break it down, electrons per second. The reason we don't use electrons per second is because there are simply too many electrons that are flowing. So we say coulombs per second because a coulomb is 6.24 times 10 to the 18 electrons. So it's a lot easier to group the electrons into a coulomb than it is to say 6.24 times 10 to the 18 electrons, or even more as the ampage increases. So we know in our example that voltage is represented by a potential energy difference between two points. We also know that current is represented by the flow rate through our turbine. This is electrons per second or coulombs per second, or in our example, meters cubed per second. What about resistance? Let's zoom in for a moment. We can see that the flow path across the turbine is more or less blocked. We can see that if we were a piece of water, it would be difficult for us to flow across the turbine. These blades here are blocking our flow path. The blades represent resistance. And if we're talking about electricity, these blades also represent resistance because they would be reducing current flow, whether that be water flow, in our example, or the flow of electrons when we're talking about electricity. If we want to reduce the resistance, then we can vary these blades here in the background. They will turn and we will end up with less resistance and more flow. You can see now that they're opening up and because we've got flow, the turbine is beginning to rotate. Now we can flow across the turbine because there's less resistance. Resistance is measured in ohms and we can calculate resistance by taking the voltage and dividing it by the current. Whereas before we could vary the resistance by increasing or decreasing the flow path across our turbine, in order to vary the resistance in an electrical circuit, we have to use alternative means. Usually this means varying the material through which the electrons flow or changing the geometry of the conductor through which the electron flows. For example, if we have a short copper wire with a large diameter, it will have less resistance than a very long copper wire with a small diameter. So a short fat copper wire has less resistance than a long thin copper wire. We know we can calculate the power output of our turbine by knowing the pressure drop across the turbine, multiplying it by the flow rate, and then multiplying that by an efficiency factor. That's when we calculate mechanical power. When we're looking at electricity, how do we calculate electrical power? Looking at this equation, the drop in pressure across the turbine, the delta P, is represented by the voltage. The flow rate across the turbine is represented by the electrical current. And when we're talking about the efficiency factor, we're actually talking about the power factor. In electrical engineering, the power factor is used to express energy efficiency. It may be that so many joules of energy are available in our electrical circuit per second, but how many joules per second are being converted into useful work? The difference between the energy that's available and the energy that's converted to useful work is represented by the power factor. Going back to our mechanical engineering example, energy out divided by energy in equals efficiency. For power factor, we're looking at the true power output, the power that we can use compared to the apparent power, the power that would be available if we had an efficiency factor of 100%. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do take a moment to check out some of our engineering courses if you want to learn more about engineering. We've got videos about pumps, pipes, valves, electrical transformers, and many other interesting and exciting engineering topics. If you have a moment, please do like or share this video on social media. It really does help us out. Or maybe just tell your friend about the YouTube channel. Thank you very much for your time.